So I am uh, oftenly asked this question, how do you decide on which matrix to select when you're using BioClear? So if, if everyone knows, BioClear comes in three different sizes. Let me take the magnification down. BioClear comes in three different sizes, the 4.5, the 5.5, and the 6.5. Similarly, they come in the 4.5 HD, 5.5 HD, and the 6.5 HD. So everyone commonly asks me, how do you decide on which matrix to use where? And uh, another, another common question is, how do you restore an opportunistic access? So I have an opportunistic access there. There was, there was some caries there, which is very commonly seen when you have two adjacent teeth. So how do you restore an opportunistic access is what is commonly asked to me. So I thought I'll, I'll make a little video for you to understand how, how both of these things happen. First, let's, let's understand how do I select the matrix. Now, after I have done my prep, so this is the prep that I have done. Let us say, let us think that we are restoring on the mesial side of this molar. So once my prep has been done, I put my probe to the base of the restoration. Uh, I mean, the base of the cavity that has been prepped. And if you notice, the the probe almost reached five millimeters. So if if it's a five millimeter till the depth of the mat uh, of, of the cavity prep, the matrix, the bioclear matrix, designed in such a way that it goes at least 0.5 millimeters into the gingiva. So you have to select a, ma a matrix which is 0.5 millimeters more. So I will, in this case, select a 5.5 HD matrix there. Uh, let me make that clear. So I'll select a 5.5 HD matrix because that would best suit the situation. Now, after I select the matrix, I have to check for one more thing. The matrix has to sit flush against the adjacent tooth marginal ridge. Again, let me start putting the matrix in place. There, always insert the matrix and let it slide in. See how it slid in 0.5 mm into the gingiva. Once it goes in, you can turn the tab over and always check whether it is sitting flush against the adjacent tooth marginal ridge so that you do not have a lot of excess that you have to trim off there. It's absolutely sitting perfectly against the adjacent tooth marginal ridge. And that is why I will not have a lot of trimming to do once I do my injection molding. So that makes my life that much more easier. And that's why in this case, the 5.5 HD or the 5.5 bio blue, whichever you like, what would be the ideal matrix? Now imagine if I would have put the probe and the probe would have read something like that, say four millimeters, then I would have selected the 4.5 matrix. If the probe would have read something like this, about five, which is approximately six millimeters, then I would have selected the 6.5 HD matrix. So that's, that's what the three heights of the matrices mean in this case. And that's how we decide which matrix to use where. So let, let us move to the second part of the video where how do I restore an opportunistic access like this? There are, there are two ways in, in my eyes as to how you can restore. There might be other ways also, but this is how I do. One is either I just do a free hand wherein I understand that uh, the contour is good of the tooth. I don't want to alter it. I can go free hand so you can do your etching bonding procedure, take the injectable composites. I like to use injectables in these case. You could use a GNL injectable or this, the Wisdent Master Design. Both of them are good injectables, highly filled. So you can use them here. You can you can use it to uh, just, just fill it slowly till it comes to the brim. And then afterwards, you may take a disc. You may take a disc and, and just disc it off. You can just do your final polishing and uh, finishing and polishing. You may take a little disc and disc it off if needed. Before, before you go ahead and restore your, so you can take a disc and just disc it off. And before you go ahead and restore the adjacent uh, class two. So you always restore the opportunistic access first and then the class two. Now, uh, another way of restoring it is to take your uh, matrix and punch a hole. So I have, I have punched a hole right in the center of the matrix by, by using the rubber dam punch. So I, I use the rubber dam punch from Sanctuary this one and it's 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 the third number hole so you can just use the rubber dam punch and now because if, if it extends buccolingually too wide in that case i would want to do this you can put the matrix in place once the matrix has been seated in place once the matrix has been seated in place i can now use that hole to put my flowable through So 
so i can i can use that hole and i can put my flowable like that i can put my flowable through it so i can put my flowable through that hole once i go ahead and just just let me show because i have not done the uh, bonding procedure but you will always do the bonding procedure beforehand so you just go ahead slowly inject it you could also use the paste if you want to but you would need a bigger hole but if it if it's a small cavity frankly you don't need the paste once this is done you can go ahead and light cure it we are just just going to light cure i i mean the matrix has just come off so you can go ahead and light cure it and you will you will get it to the approximate shape that you want we did not set up the light cure right now so you can go ahead do the do the light curing procedure and it will give you the approximate shape and once you have the correct shape or the desired shape that you wanted you can then go ahead and restore the adjacent that that extra part might come out like a button you can just take a disk and disk of that button quickly and once that is done the advantage of this second method with this punch hole through this is you get a very nice polished restoration all around you don't need to sit and polish that you get a very nice polished restoration and you just need to polish this little area or that little button which you can just cut off by using the disc so uh, hopefully we we've answered both your questions one is how to select the matrix and two is how to restore now once i have gone ahead and restored this uh, uh, proximal opportunistic axis let me just light cure it run through so once you have restored the proximal opportunistic axis you can then now go ahead and restore your i i mean don't use the same matrix but just to show you can then go ahead and restore your adjacent class to again measure the depth of the cavity choose your uh, matrix accordingly and make sure the matrix is sitting flush against the adjacent tooth marginal it's like that so that that makes it easier afterwards so that you don't have a lot of cleaning and also your contact is at the right place you have a nice embrasure everywhere thank you i will i will make some more videos i'll make some more videos in the future and just let you know